There is a dangerous teaching going around, and it is far too comfortable in far too many churches today. This is one of those topics that are difficult to have conversations about. Uh, it's a topic that doesn't get talked about very often at all. It's something you can find in your very own town, as well as towns all around the country. I can tell you for a fact that it is in our town. The dangerous teaching is this, that you can believe in Jesus, but not submit to him as Lord. You need to be warned that even demons believe in Jesus. They know him to be real, but they do not submit to him as Lord. You see the difference. The idea, uh, the belief, the false belief that you can live your so-called Christian life for years and then decide at some point down the road that when you get serious about Jesus, well, I'm going to do that down the road. And then I'll make him the Lord of my life. But in the meantime, I will believe in Jesus and quiet my conscience. Mark that box. Check that off my list. And convince myself that I'm free of the dangers of eternal hell at least. As far as serving Jesus as Lord and making him Lord of my life, well, I'll, I'll get to that eventually down the road. How many of you have run across that kind of thinking or that kind of belief? Uh, there's not really a, a single term for that, which is one of the reasons why it makes it so difficult to talk about. I run across this kind of thinking and, and belief weekly. Uh, these are the very same people who generally uh, will be asking me when they were saved. They want to know how they can know the time that they were saved, or they're uncertain of their salvation. Was it after they prayed a prayer? Was it after they signed the back of a card? Was it when they were seven years old at church camp and asked Jesus into their heart? All those things, by the way, are not mentioned in scripture, which should give you pause. These same people will say, I, I, I mean, I, I, I did one of those things. I prayed a prayer. I signed the back of the card. I, I uh, accepted Jesus into my heart at church camp. But I mean, I didn't get serious about Jesus Christ until my 20s, my 30s. And in between, pastor, if I'm being honest, I was basically just kind of living however I wanted for the most part. Can you tell me when I was really saved? And the answer to that question is this. You were really saved when you believed in and received Jesus Christ, the Lord. Not just Jesus, but you are converted when you receive and submit to the whole Christ. And that means Jesus Christ, the Lord. Uh, Steve Lawson has a great example of this or a good illustration of this. If, if he came to your house, and by the way, Steve Lawson is a very solid uh, biblical preacher and teacher that I would highly recommend. But he has a great illustration for this. He says, if someone comes to your house and knocks on the door and you say, who is it? And he says, it's Steve Lawson. And you say, oh, come on in, Steve, but leave the Lawson out. Well, he says, I, I can't come in at all until all of me can come in. I can't separate myself and peel off my skin and slide that under the door and only part of me in there uh, be in there. It's all or nothing. And the same is true with receiving Christ. You receive all of him or none of him. He does not come in installments. Rock of Ages
Friends, it is a dangerous teaching to teach that you can be saved from your sins, but then not changed by the transformative work of genuine faith in Jesus Christ. It leads to people desiring the benefits of Christ uh, without the submission to him. Um, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 15 says this, He died for all, meaning Jesus Christ. He died for all, and he died for all that he came to save that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him, for Jesus, who for their sake died and was raised. Do you hear that? You live now for Jesus. You are no longer living a self-centered life. That is all done and finished. Now your life is for Christ and Christ alone, a new life of righteousness and service to him. Galatians 2 verse 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is now no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. When you submit to Christ, when you have genuine faith and trust in him and you submit to him and he saves you in that moment of faith, you are dying to yourself. You are being nailed up on that cross along with Christ, dying to self. That's the whole purpose of the sac- sacrament of baptism is that it's showing the, the immersion is the showing of the death to the old life and the coming up out of the water, being cleansed and being given new life in Jesus Christ. Who you, Your life now belongs to him. Your past is now his past. Your, your present is now his present. His, your future is now his future. We need to remember that and make sure that people understand that the evidence of a genuine saved person is a transformed life. Oh, I truly believe it's easy to know when someone's genuinely saved because Christ becomes their everything. As you're about to go about your day, or perhaps you're already in the middle of your day, uh, take a moment to pray with me, will you? Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ. And we ask, uh, this is this is something that is beyond us to do on our own. We ask for your help through the power and presence of your Holy Spirit to no longer live for ourselves, but to live for Christ And help us, Lord, to to live in a way that proclaims that truth, that Jesus Christ is not just our Savior, but our Lord. Help us to find delight in you and help our desires be your desires. Help us to commit our ways to you, to trust in you, and to help us share the truth of Jesus Christ to those you put around us. Equip us for whatever it is you have in store for us today and help us remember that you're with us always, even till the end of the age. Let us take good courage in this, for we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a Christ-filled day.